Just the other day, our colleagues at Stuff told a story about a woman in Levin who's transplanting wings onto monarch butterflies. Linda Archer, her name is. Our boss Pip noticed it and we gave Linda a call. Now, from time to time, and this is more Kim Hill's domain than ours, we're in the news business, sadly, not the metaphysics and meaning business. We talk to someone who's animated by something, alive with the love of what they do. And Linda Archer, by golly, is one of them. We played the whole interview, but it went on even longer than Morning Report gives to politicians. So this is the story of Linda Archer and her butterflies. They're just gorgeous, aren't they? They're like jewellery. Yeah, they are. You know, they're just amazing. That grab, which is what we call bits of interviews cut into stories, was five seconds long. We got jewellery, we got amazing, and we were only just beginning. Oh, look, I was just besotted with them. And in a way, this isn't a transplant story, it's a love story. And I decided that I was going to breed the monarch butterflies in this conservatory. We're in Levin here, which has had a big news week with the petrol price story. And I, I did over 120... Um, butterflies in that conservatory. We phoned Linda on Wednesday. And um, and I was, I was just besotted with them. That's the second besotted. We haven't just repeated the first one. They are just stunning. We phoned to interview Linda, but I was completely superfluous to requirements. Her love, her knowledge, we were hanging like a chrysalis on every word. And you can time them. You know, when you, when you keep an eye on the green chrysalis, it starts to darken at the top and then the whole thing goes dark and you know that within 24 hours there's going to be a butterfly. But the point of the interview, although maybe even having a point, is a miserably prosaic thing when there are butterflies to be celebrated. They're just amazing. But did you know there are three cycles of the monarch butterfly? I, d I didn't know this. And I, When you talk about it, it's, it's poetry, it's beautiful. You love these things, don't you? I do, I do. The point of the interview, which in the end ran for 19 minutes, which was longer even than our story with the DHBs last night, was to ask Linda about the transplants. And finally, I did. Well, I, I had a butterfly that, that emerged from its chrysalis with the crimped wing. And, um, and I thought, this poor thing is just going to die because it, it just couldn't fly properly. It kept falling on the ground. So I then went um, on to Google and I said, can anything be done for a dummy's butterfly wing? And up came all these options. And so there in Levin, Linda Archer began the process of rebuilding broken butterflies. My favourite Neil Thin lyric comes to mind. Praise will come to those whose kindness leaves you without debt. Yes, the butterflies will never understand it or even know what's happened. But Linda Archer had set out to save them. And, um, and then I thought, oh gosh, how am I going to do this? You know, I was a little bit nervous about it. But I thought, this butterfly is going to die if I don't do something. And whilst it might not seem important to some people, it was hell of an important to that butterfly. And here's what she did. So I laid out all my tools... I had something to hold it, some tweezers, some toothpicks, um, talcum powder, and you'll hear why that's needed later, and, um, and some glue. And there's only certain types of glue you can use. Surgical glue is best, but very hard to get hold of. And she tried to hold the butterflies down with tweezers at first. But tweezers are very light, and if a butterfly gets a bit frantic, it can flip the tweezers off. So she used a two-pronged fork, the kind you might use to toast marshmallows with. You just put the butterfly's body in between one of the, the two prongs. And she took good wings from butterflies that had died of natural causes in her garden, and she began the tender and delicate business of attaching them where they were needed. And then you just, with a toothpick or a very, very, very tiny paintbrush, um, put the glue on to the the damaged remaining bit of the damaged wing and then you put the glue on the underside of the replacement wing line them up and press them together and you just hold them a little bit to make sure that they're sticking and the important thing is that you don't have any wet glue hanging around so that's where the talcum powder comes in you sprinkle that 
onto where you've been gluing and get a, um, a cotton bud or something and just dust it, just dust it off. You don't have to get it off completely, it doesn't matter. But what it does do is it dries up any of glue that might be sitting around because what you've got to do next is you've got to pick that butterfly up, line the two wings up to make sure that they line up and press where the glued portions are. So you can see how important that talcum powder is, that if the glue had still been there and wet, you'd have just glued its wings together, and that would have been disastrous. And it worked. Linda Archer had done her transplant. But the butterflies are exhausted, of course, after major surgery, so she cares for them, feeding them, keeping them safe, until, and sometimes days have passed. They're ready. And once it's got its real strength up, then you, you kind of wait for a really nice sunny day where there's not a great deal of wind, looks like it's not going to rain, and you just take it outside and what does it want to do? You know, and if it wants to fly off, it will fly off. If it wants to stay with you, it will stay with you. So um, I have an injured butterfly at the moment that um, it just wants to stay with me. Hmm. So um, I just feed it two or three times a day. And, and when I they fly off, fly. and Linda, when they fly off, w what's that yeah. like? When you've actually done this extraordinary thing with the toothpicks and the fork and the glue and the talcum powder and the food and all your care and attention, and then one flies off, what's that like? Oh, look, you're choked. You really are choked. You, you kind of get a bit teary because it's your baby setting off. I know it sounds silly, but um, you're, you're really, really pleased. You know, that um, another one lives to fly another day. Linda Archer, I, I want to tell you about that interview. So sometimes you come in here and interviews are a nightmare and you ask a person a really simple question they won't answer it because they're being difficult or obstructive or they just haven't had any breakfast. But that one, I just came in and sat down and listened to it for 90 minutes. Can we have a shot of the control room? Francis, can you whack up that control room camera? If you're looking, and the people in the control room just sat and listened and we all just sat and smiled at each other as Linda, thank you, Francis, as Linda told us the story of... Uh, of gluing wings on butterflies there in Levin. Magic.